And with that, we are going to move on to our next uh, keynote session. Our keynote speaker is Mr. Devakar Dayal, Managing Director, India and Sark Tenable. Mr. Dayal is the Managing Director and Country Manager for Tenable's India and Sark Business Region. He is responsible for developing and executing Tenable's growth strategy for the region, creating a strong foundation of partnerships with customers and partner key ecosystem to expand the cyber exposure company's presence in the security and market across India and SARC. Mr. Dayal has more than 20 years of experience in the IT and cyber security industry, leading high growth security businesses, focusing on advanced technology solutions and services in cyber security and networking. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please expect a huge round of applause in welcoming our keynote speaker, Mr. Devakar Dayal, on the stage, please. I'm sure the applause can be a little bit better. Check. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, <coughs> hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I know cybersecurity sometimes can be a bit scary, right? Which is why maybe half the room is kind of emptied out. But uh, I promise you, the next 20 minutes, I will make this really, really interesting for you. I'll start with one basic question, which is how many of you are, you know, in some form or another involved with cybersecurity in your particular company or industries? Okay, almost half the room, which is good. So the presentation, uh, you know, that I'm going to cover in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Thank you, Shankar primarily gives you an overview of what is the opportunity ahead of us in terms of uh, you know, the whole digital transformation out here. But more importantly is what is the challenges that we need to overcome as we you know, grasp this opportunity ahead of us. Yep. Uh, the topic for the last two days right, and for tomorrow, very, very topical. The pace of change, right? if you can see so, in the last maybe 10 years, we have never seen this before. What used to typically take 100 years, today it happens in a decade. And what typically takes a decade, maybe in a year we get done, right? And we already know that. Companies get created and become billion dollars in maybe a couple of years. And then companies who are billion dollars go out of business. All this is simply because of these four pillars that are driving that, which is the what we call VUCA, right? And this change is so fast, thanks to the internet, that this has almost come and become like it's on steroids. You know what steroids do, right? They multiply the pace. And hence, it has come to a point where traditional companies who have a very brick and mortar approach actually are going out of business, right? We all hear about you know, companies going uh, out of business almost every month, the big names that we knew. One of the last or recent big names was somebody who ran a travel company for almost 50 years, right across the world. And uh, today, they're out of business. The primary reason is uh, the number of travelers traveling across the world for holidays and work hasn't come down, but it's actually gone up maybe 100 times. But they were not able to capitalize on the changing consumer needs, right? In the way they consume the technology of buying. And hence, they got decimated. So simple point here is, if you do not digitize and disrupt in your industry, you will be destroyed. And we have enough and more examples. I won't call them out, but you know, in every vertical out here, we have examples where the traditional companies have either changed over and become a technology company or they have gone out of business. 20 years back, if I told you that every bank in the world, every music company would actually be a technology company, you wouldn't believe me, right? You would laugh at me. Today, the biggest music company, the biggest taxi company, the biggest retail company, they all are primarily technology-led companies. And I'm going to then make a very small prophecy here that in the next couple of years, in the next coming years, 
if every company does not become a cyber security company, they will not exist in business. Because as you've taken all your assets and your strength and made it online and brought it to a digital lifeline, if I may say so, because you engage in a digital world, you, you, know, you communicate in the digital world, you transact using digital, and if you don't know how to secure that digital, you will be destroyed and you'll be out of business. And hence, the small prophecy, maybe three years, five years down the line, you will recall uh, you know, that you heard in one little presentation something about why every government, every industry, companies, every organization needs to have a cyber security mantra ingrained into their go-to-market business. How many of you know what this is? Sorry? And uh, we all know, right? Okay, of course, we all know. Do you know what it does? Yes, it waits off all the negatives. How effective is this technology? <laughs> Very? <laughs> we had a wonderful session yesterday evening uh, where we looked at beliefs and you know how we kind of are uh, ingrained in believing certain things from our childhood and then how it's very difficult for us to overcome these. This is the belief system that cyber security industry has in a way kind of ingrained into the companies. Simply by, you know, getting the industry to really, f and the customers to really focus on completely different set of problems or the wrong set of problems. And why we say that is simply because some of the myth around cybersecurity, I just want to kind of keep it out there. The first one is, you know, some of you who are in tech industry may already know this, but the internet was never designed for security or security in mind, in a way. It was more for just sharing of information between some college grads and professors, of course. And that makes the whole digital journey when you go online that much more vulnerable, right? Simple. Number two is, all technologies run finally on a piece of code, software, right? Excepting for maybe a rocket or aeroplane, most of the devices have very poorly written softwares. How many of you have updated your phone, smartphone softwares in the last one year? Raise of hands. And uh, why did we update? Almost everybody in the room. So why did we update? You're forced to do so, but nobody asked you to update. Okay, sometimes it's also automatically. Thank you. The reason why the updates come out is simply because there are bugs that they discover in the previous version of the software. And hence, they give you the update so that somebody cannot exploit that particular bug and then use your smartphone in a way that you would not like to be exposed. That's primarily why we need to keep ourselves updated and patched, right? And of course, they also sometimes bring in a lot of uh, you know, features and functionalities to improve. Just like human beings, all of us, we're never perfect from right from our school and college and adulthood, we have vulnerabilities. So does every software, right? And as we embrace technology, remember every technology has inherent vulnerabilities that need to be time to time updated and patched. The question is how easy or how difficult it is today and what is the methodology that we use which really kind of makes the whole cyber attacks and cyber breaches of far more you know, in your face than otherwise. One of the simple facts is we tend to focus on you know, this, the next generation zero day attacks while most of the breaches I don't want to name the companies because I think most of you know, you know every company in the top 10 verticals across the world have in some time or other been breached, but they've all been most of the time breached because of known vulnerabilities and unpatched systems. Which means they all had a phone, and the phone company said, please update the phone because there is a bug, but they didn't do that. Why they didn't do that? Maybe because they didn't have enough people, enough time, or they were simply not paying attention. Right? Of course, we have huge IT teams and cybersecurity teams which are paid to really focus on making sure the companies stay safe. But when you can do this for your phone, sometimes they just get difficult to you know, do this across your enterprise wide. And a lot of times, <clears throat> in a lot of surveys we've seen, the IT staff of the companies 
they actually knew that they have they were vulnerable right and uh, and still it happened simply because of the complexity and scale that involves in the way they have been addressing the problem the other interesting aspect is we have very friendly neighbors do we agree yes. yeah superb who always want nice things for our country yes right when they want today to you know really bring down india they don't need to fire fire a bullet right they don't need to really you know launch a missile attack or something else all they need to do is bring down the digital network of this country right and we have seen different examples how they using fake media using social media but also various other things a lot of things people focus on around next generation attacks on what we call nation state uh, attacks right countries to countries instead of fighting old boring wars using bullets and tankers you can now fight in the cyber space and bring down the entire networks of the country right so that nobody can you know move around even they use known vulnerabilities why simply because the dark web today the web that is basically underneath the internet has got very cheap easily available exploitable vulnerabilities right that you can just buy for as simple as maybe even 100 dollars maybe 5000 rupees and then throw the marbles at 1000 devices and pray whatever comes back and that's it's a, that's an open door for you to go and hack right it reduces the risk for them of execution and most important of all is least attribution if you want to agar dhaka dalna hai to you won't wear a tenable t-shirt and go and rob the house right you would go anonymously right you don't want anybody to know and hence the vulnerabilities that is there in our phones in our routers switches you know servers your erp systems all of them have you know at some point or other been used to actually exploit using openly available known vulnerabilities just a 30 second you know history or where security industry has been i've had the privilege of uh, or you know misfortune whatever you may call it of being in cyber security industry for over 20 plus years right and to me these are just jargons the problem statement remains the same the nature of the problem keeps changing right it used to be once upon a time blasters and what not viruses and there were spywares and root kits and there was ransomware ddos names keep changing the nature of the problem remains same and the funny part about the whole thing is if you had to hack a company or an or a network or whatever 20 years back you really needed to know something about technology and hacking a bit of programming and networking today even our neighborhood auntie who's at home watching tv series all she needs to do is outsource that to you know anybody in the dark web and it's as easy as that so imagine the threat that countries companies yourselves are facing today simply because how easy it is to actually get exploited the other aspect that i wanted to just get kind of pay attention to is this industry when i started out was not more than a billion dollars 20 25 years back today it's almost a 100 plus billion dollar industry yeah cyber security but the number of breaches in the last similar period right haven't come down they've only been going up so if i'm a cfo or many of you are, i'm sure have something to do with finance you would look at this and say there's something wrong with this picture correct if you're spending more time energy in fixing something it should be solving the problem but not it's not solving the problem so here's where i rest my case wherein i think somewhere we're not solving the right problem because we seem to be chasing the next cool gadget the next cool stuff and not really doing the basics right the basics like brushing your teeth in the morning and night before you go to bed right hygiene cyber hygiene Uh, i'm sure many of you have visited doctors for health checks right most of us when we turn 40 we have to do this annual health check it's a, it's a kind of a must right when you go to a doctor and and you want to know the doctor asks you you know how healthy you are how do you think the doctor responds can i tell my doctor that i'm healthy because i walk 10000 steps every day i do marathons every year or at least a half marathon and what diet i'm on is that the answer you would give to your doctor no the only metric the doctor asks and sees is your blood 
test report and maybe MRI scan depending on your condition, right? But the way cybersecurity industry is, right, is if you imagine it was in a hospital, people very less number of times actually take a blood test but directly go and get a surgery done. So what I'm trying to tell you is you're just chasing the wrong problems by buying maybe right technologies. Well, of course, you have you know, the magic quadrant saying it is the best thing to do, but maybe it doesn't apply to you. Why? Because you're not doing the basic stuff. And if similarly, you, know, you report to a board or management at some point, somebody will ask you, hey, we've been spending so many crores or lakhs every year on cybersecurity for the company. How secure are we? What do you think the answer is going to be? Somebody will say, oh, we bought X firewalls, Y IPS, so many perimeters. I've spent 20 crores last year. My budget increased by 5%. Yes. <laughs> but my question is, how secure are we? And I think that is where our company, Tenable, and that is where we believe the process of solving the problem needs to be, which is understanding your cyber exposure and your cyber score, right? Uh, if you obviously said to your board that we patched so many systems, he would laugh at you because that is not business metric, right? That's bullshit. That's a technical data. That means nothing to a business uh, uh, leader. What they look for is primarily metrics that you can measure and you can help improve and grow, right? And if you had metrics, you can actually run a more effective cybersecurity program as such, right? But the problem with this cybersecurity metrics is this. Where do you actually start? What do you look at? I did a flight simulation course. It's in the Bombay airport. Uh, you know, you can just take a couple of minutes and sign up for that. And you actually get to fly, oh, I think, one of the 747s, the flight simulation, right? And there are so many buttons out there, so many things that you need to follow as a practice before you take off, land, and of course, when you're in mid-air. The question is, if you had to just put a simple dashboard metric for your cybersecurity of your company to protect your company, what would be that number? What would be that simple framework? I guess that's where we're going to. People traditionally have done audits. They use audits as a way to measure their scores. And uh, what's wrong with that is basically because it doesn't work simply. Uh, you know, you use a traditional tool like Nessus, which is obviously a product of Tenable, and then you scan the network, you look at the data, and then you give this data to an IT guy and say, go fix it. And in organizations, a little secret, you might find it funny, is as we engage with between cybersecurity team and the IT team, cybersecurity team is like that neighbor who is always complaining about the other neighbor's kid. And on a daily basis, if your neighbor is going to tell you that your kid is not correct, what is going to happen after a while? You want to stop listening. That's what happens with cybersecurity in a way because they're coming with reports every week saying, hey, you need to fix this. Oh, you need to fix this. You need to update this. And they're like, should I just keep updating my software or should I run my business? Because at the end of the day, IT is running business because business needs agility, right? So this is where the trade-off happens. And that is why traditionally this has failed, right? And of course, this isn't scale because the traditional approach uses this methodology that we look at all the vulnerabilities of the world out there and then look at your company's assets and say, hey, how many do we have to patch? And the answer is literally everything. If everything is important, nothing is important. If everything is urgent, nothing is urgent, right? And hence, as we, as companies are embarking on this digital transformation journey, and I'm sure you heard enough of this the last day and a half, it is getting more and more difficult and it's even more important that they understand not just the traditional assets, but also the new age assets, and of course, things that are coming out. As an example, how many of us know what is the vulnerability state in our SCADA control systems, right? We travel in aeroplanes, we travel in, through airports, the things that run the airports, the things that run the manufacturing plants. So we bought a company uh, earlier this week, which is one of the pioneers in OT technology, operational technology. So we are able to actually look at one single view right, and protect and give you a simple dashboard rating on what and all that you have versus really trying and solving the problem. The industry has been so far in the last, you know, 10, 20 years focused so much about protection and detection response, so many different technology products that somewhere they have forgotten to start the foundational aspect of risk and what do I have right now. 
Tenable's technology primarily, like I said, looks at everything out there, including your IoT, your containers, your clouds, and whatnot, as a, your anything basically with an IP address out there, right? And that is what is the answer when you go back to their board and say, hey, we have 50,000 IP addresses in our digital you know, empire, right, in our IT landscape, out of which we have 5,000 which have got this infection or this challenge, and maybe 300 that we cannot you know, mitigate for whatever reason. That is my business risk highlight. Not how many perimeters I have and whatnot. This is a number, a statistic, which every year gets thrown out in terms of how many vulnerabilities exist out there. And obviously, as you can see, if you took this as on the face value and applied this to each of the companies, they would busy, basically they'll be busy just updating the whole time. Where we endeavor and where we go really is focusing on the ones that really matter. You may have vulnerabilities out there, but there's no exploits available for the last, say, three months or six months. Don't waste your time. Fix the ones which has got a vulnerability but actually has caught an exploit which can be used to launch an attack. The difference between you know, everything is important versus just focusing on the important. And the example I want to leave you with is we all travel in airports, right? We all, when, we, when we travel by aeroplanes, we go to the airports. All of us get scanned, irrespective of who we are. On an average, say, we scan 10 lakh people in five airports in the country, right? What are we doing trying to scan? We are basically looking for those 10 or 50 potential threats who could actually do something bad, right? But what do we do in the process? We put 10 lakh people through a 10 minute to 15 minute process of cleansing, right? Looking at what you have, your shirt, your bed, your whatnot, except for, of course, your main clothing. They remove everything else just to find those potential threats. What if we could tell you out of the 10 lakh people out here, these are the only 50 people you need to look at and maybe have a kind of uh, a remote kind of a survey on them or do a Reiki on them. Wouldn't that then solve the problem? So we call this basically the identification of false positive, right? We need to know there are too many false positives in cybersecurity and that is why we are always chasing the wrong problem. And hence we get so, so much alerts from our existing systems, we get a fatigue where we tend to overlook the actual thing that can really do damage while looking at a lot of more false uh, you know, alarms. So hence, business needs to start with basically what is really the most important for them, which comes around what is your asset, which is what is critical for you. Of course, where's the vulnerabilities that you have in those assets, and then where are the threats that are real for those vulnerabilities. That becomes primarily your focus area in terms of getting either a methodology to get a scorecard on a daily basis, monthly basis, weekly basis, and of course, make sure that that is going to the remediation cycle and seeing how are you fixing it and coming back. This is the, the, the next wave of adoption of really risk-based vulnerability management that can help keep a company more secure, right, but also more aware in terms of really where they're exposed and how can they, how can they overcome on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Of course, uh, dashboard and pictures. Like I said, you don't have to fix everything, but fix those 50 people. They matter more than everybody else. Uh, what if you could get a mechanism to not just understand your cyber exposure score, but also communicate that to your CFO and board in numbers? They look at balance sheets. They look at Salesforce. Tenable cyber exposure can give a scorecard just like that in terms of what is the cyber risk that the company is running, right? And more important than that is, what if you can compare yourself? Wouldn't you want to know that I have spent X crores or X million dollars on my company cybersecurity? Am I any better or worse or average compared to my industry peers? That's called benchmarking, right? So we also help you, if you would like to, give you a comparison score of how are you doing with regards to your cybersecurity exposure compared to your competitor. That kind of becomes a benchmark again to measure how both the companies eventually would run their business in a way. We also take our customers through what we call the maturity model. For lack of time, I'm going to kind of skip through this. But primarily, it's about understanding your maturity in actually following this basic hygiene stuff. Yeah? 
we have been you know leading this for the last 20 plus years we 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 have the agility of a young company but we've been around for a while we listed on nasdaq last year and uh, you know across the world different uh, you know analysts have rated us as one of the finest and the best in terms of how we detect vulnerabilities in terms of accuracy in terms of the zero day and of course in terms of how much of assets we can cover remember it's about if i can see everything then I can tell you better, right? What is the exposure? If I only see a bit of this, it's very difficult for me to really give you a, a, a complete picture. The key for cybersecurity is integration. The problem with cybersecurity is silos, and hence, if you need to secure your, your, your landscape, you have to make sure that your technology works with your existing technology as well as anything that you purchase in the future which means they need to exchange data in a right format, in the right time, so that you reduce your false positive. This is a very important benchmark for us, and hence we are really, really focused on making sure that we work with the necessary ecosystem of technologies, be it the ticket management, PIM solutions, SIEM solutions, NAC, to make sure the vulnerability data of all your assets is exchanged in a manner that, that can be really used to reduce false positives and focus on the real threats out there. Security, remember, at the end of the day, isn't about just tools. It's really about understanding your risk and measuring that and reducing that over time. And we believe if we took this approach, I think as a nation, as corporates, we can really you know, make sure that we are not exposed in areas that we shouldn't be. But more importantly, we have a return on investment on our cybersecurity program, people, and process. Hopefully this was interesting you know, for you and you picked some things out of it and we are here around the conference and more than happy to come and uh, you know, share more information with you. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. Thank you so much. <laughs>